Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be recommending some royalty romance books. I have a part one to this video down below. Those are going to be more contemporary romances. This one is more fantasy, paranormal, alien sci-fi, historical royalty romances if that makes sense. So if you're solely looking for only contemporary ones, I have that video linked down below if you want to check that out. So let's get into his recommendations. The first book that I have to recommend to you is a staple on my channel. It's my favorite romance book ever is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is a fantasy romance, a friends to lovers romance, a marriage of convenience. If you have not read this book yet, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> this book and this series in general are everything to me. Grace Draven is the goddess of fantasy romance. Like she is amazing and um, this book definitely shows it. So this is a romance between Barishan and Ildico. Both of them are royalty in their own aspect. Um, Ildico is the orphaned daughter to the king of the gallery, human people. And Barishan is the spare to the Kai people. So he's Kai, he has gray skin, yellow eyes, uh, nail, like sharp nails, sharp teeth, all that stuff. So he's like the spare heir. Um, and they are put in a marriage of convenience or like an arranged marriage to form an alliance between their people. And they do not find the other person attractive whatsoever, but their relationship, like their marriage is built on friendship and then it grows into something more and it is so stinking good. I love this book, okay? If you haven't read it yet, you need to. It's my favorite romance book ever. If you don't like friends to lovers, this book will change your mind. This book is also very character driven. If you are a character driven person, you will love this book. I'm a more of a character driven reader. Um, if you want more plot to your romances, you got to pick a book too along with this um because that one is also centered around Britain and Ildico and that one deals with like politics and war and royal more royalty stuff so next I have a vampire romance for you we have Dark Lover by J.R. Ward so this is the first book in a vampire romance series the Black Dagger Brotherhood that is just a fantastic series okay some people love this book some people hate it but it's but the series in general it's totally worth it this one however is like the only royalty romance I want to say because our hero here Wrath. He is like heir king of all of the vampires. I want to say he's the last pure blood vampire in existence and he meets with one of his friends one day named Darius who tells him that he knows of a woman who is a vampire but she has not changed yet. So in this paranormal setting. Vampires go through kind of like a changing when they reach a certain age of maturity to where they become a full-blown vampire. This change is very dangerous and the more human blood like you have in your system the less likely you will survive and you need a vampire to drink off of. So in this land you like vampires don't drink off of humans they drink off of vampires of the opposite sex. So Darius comes to Wrath and is like I know this woman who's about to change and you are the most like pure blooded vampire in existence she would survive off of your blood if you were to give it to her um and so at first he refuses because he doesn't want to do that and then once he sees the girl and gets to know her he agrees um and she has no idea what is going on but um he is the king of all of the vampires and this book is about him like finally coming into that position because previously he was kind of adamant about not being king because um his parents are dead and some of the things that his parents went through he does not want to go through but through him becoming king of the vampires he is changing what vampire society has been like and things that need to change and so yeah this is the romance between beth and wrath this actually also has disability representation wrath is visually impaired and so he often walks around with sunglasses i just love beth and wrath especially throughout the rest of the series because you get to see previous couples pop up in later books which I always love in a romance companion series so next i have a historical for you we have how to pursue a princess by karen hawkins so this is about lily balfour and she and her family are kind of like in financial ruin and so she needs to make an advantageous marriage in order to save her family from financial ruin so the only way that she can do that is to marry a rich man and so lily's godmother 
um, announces that she's found the perfect match for Lily and she needs to come to her house party that will happen for like a month or so. But then when she's at the party, she ends up meeting a guy named Peter Volvinsky, who is not the man that her godmother had planned for her to match with. Um, and she ends up falling for him. They end up falling for each other, even though Peter claims that he is like, has no money to his name. And so she's like, this is not gonna work out because I need to save my family. So I have to put this relationship aside, this man that I'm falling in love with. I can't be with him because I love my family so much and I have to put my love aside to save them. Little does she know that Peter is actually a freaking prince. <laughs> I think he's a Prussian prince. And he doesn't tell anybody that he's a prince because he wants a woman to fall in love with him. I am so sorry for the barking dogs. Oh my word. The other dog is at the vet right now. And so they don't know what to do with themselves with just the two of them. And so they're just staring at the window, not knowing what to do with their life. <laughs> anyway, so Peter has not told anybody that he is a prince because he wants a woman to fall in love with who he is instead of his money and his title. And so he knows that Lily loves him, but he can't tell her that he's like a fabulously wealthy because he wants her to love him for who he is instead of his money. And like, there's just like a bunch of shenanigans going on in here. You have fun pugs that are causing up a ruckus. And then you have the meddlesome godmother in here too. And a bunch of other characters. This series overall is just hilarious. And I love it. I really, really, really recommend this one. Next, I have Rescued by Her Alien Mate by Ava York and Star Huntress. This is an alien romance, obviously. So this one is very Ice Planet Barbarian-esque where you have a bunch of human women that have been abducted by Earth and been captured by evil aliens and said evil alien spaceship ends up crash landing on this planet that our hero is on. He is actually a uh, king of all of his people um, and they are out uh, like on like a hunting trek and they come across this spaceship and these women, these women were implanted with um, like translator devices, but the aliens don't have that. So the humans can understand what the guys, like the alien guys are saying, but the guys cannot understand them. And so it's kind of like a language barrier here too. But right when our hero sees our heroine, one of the human women that was captured, he is like, oh my gosh, that is my mate. And like your eyes start to glow and something else happens too. But um, it's just interesting because there are some people in his land that he is ruling that don't want these human women to be in society. Um, so they're having to deal with all of that as well as someone possibly trying to kill him. So, and her. Um, so there's a bunch of other things going on in here, but he is the king of all of these aliens in their land. Um, but yeah, this one gives me a lot of Ice Planet Barbarian vibes. So if you want an IPB book, but you've already read all the books in the series, maybe check out this one. Okay. He needed, he needed a lap to sit on. So that's what we're going to do. He has, um, he has separation anxiety with the other dog. So um, he's gonna sit here and hopefully not <laughs> cause problems, right? Next, I have another fantasy romance for you. We have The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. King is in the title. This is about Kasmin and the Winter King. So the Winter King is a very dangerous man and he basically comes to the King of Summerlee and is like, hey, I won't take over your land or cause war with you if you give me one of your beautiful famous daughters to marry. And the king has to agree because he doesn't want war or whatever, but he decides to trick King Winter here. And he does this by marrying him, marrying him off to one of his daughters. However, it's not one of his beautiful famous daughters that all the land knows about. It's actually the daughter that nobody knows about that he hates and despises. I believe he does not like her because he either reminds her too much of his dead wife or like his wife died in childbirth giving birth to her. It's one of the two, I can't remember which. Um, so she's like a rejected princess essentially. And um, they're put in a marriage and she has like a veil over her face the entire time. So he doesn't know who he's marrying until after they're already married and they consummated their marriage. This book is very enemies to lovers. Um, they both hate each other because when he realizes he's been duped, he is so pissed, especially at her. Cause he's like, you tricked me. And she's like, I needed to get out of that place. I hate my father. My father hates me. I needed to get out of that abusive place for me. Um, and this is the only way that I can do it. And so I did it, even though I'm terrified of you. So there's a bunch of royalty aspects going in here. There's magical powers. He has winter ice magic and she has like storm powers and can cause storms and stuff. So when she gets really pissed at winter, she can cause a storm in the sky. It's really funny. Next, I have A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. Oh, I 
think he's wanting to get off my lap now. Are you wanting to turn? Okay. He wanted, there's his ear. Um, <laughs> this is the first book in the Reluctant Royal series. So this whole series is dealing with royalty. However, I've only read this first book. So our heroine in here, she basically gets these spam emails a lot saying like, you have been chosen to marry an African prince or you're a long lost princess or something like that. And they obviously look like spam emails. So she just deletes them and all that stuff until one day a real African prince is telling her how they are arranged to be married. And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, so they actually have to, I believe they fake um be engaged like they pretend to be engaged for a specific reason in here um but i thought this was super fun i love Alyssa cole's writing and i really want to read the rest of the series i've heard amazing things about the other books and even the novellas too a novella that is a royalty romance is queen sized by jessica kane i do love king sized by her that one's in my previous recommendation video but this one also deals with royalty so essentially the king in here he is uh not wanting to get married due to reasons um, um, I think he's like a damaged hero that doesn't want to ever get married. And then um, he ends up going to kind of like these bride games where um, women who want to get married will perform these tasks to show men how valuable they are as a woman. And then um, like a man can choose to marry them or not afterward. And so Lady Gwen here, she is needing a husband um, because she needs money to save her family farm. She is now the... Um, kind of like guardian of her two younger sisters and she needs to provide for them. And so the only way she can think of doing that is to get married. Um, and so she goes in these games and these games are like tasks like uh, baking a really good pie and carrying like two large pails of water a certain distance and like stuff like that. The king in here attends these games and right when he sees Gwen, he wants her. But um, she's just like, either you marry me or we're not being together because I cannot be your mistress. I need to take care of my younger sisters. Um, and he's not having it. He's like, I don't want to get married, blah, blah, blah. She's like, well, sucks to suck then because then you're not going to be with me. And he is furious. He's like, but I want you so bad. A woman has never said no to me, essentially. And he has to be <laughs> kind of like lower down a few pegs when Gwen kind of like shows him like I will do anything for my sisters and I need a husband even though I might not love him I need him because I love my sisters way more he takes a lot of convincing but he may or may not ask her to marry him at one point this is a very short novella that I really enjoyed I gave it four stars when I read it so yeah next I have a fantasy romance this is the fake king's curse by Jamie Schlosser all these books in the series by the way, are also uh, royalty romances. So like they're all dealing with princes and stuff like that. Yeah. Let's not bark, please. Please, Let, let's not. Ollie, Carrion is from a fantasy land. He's a prince and he ends up going into a portal into our world, into earth. Mm -hmm. And he goes to this, he like gets transported to this land, um, like a farmland. And he ends up accidentally falling in the river that's on the land. And a Harry and Quinn here, they're both like 11 at the time, I want to say, ends up saving him from the river that's on her family's property. And they become very close friends ever since. And she sees him every single day. They're like best friends. But Kyrian sees her once a year. So like the time difference between these two places are different. So every single day in Quinn's time, Kyrian is growing a whole year older and Quinn is staying the same. So by the time Quinn is like 19 or 18, Kyrian is like hundreds of years old and they're very close friends. And she comes up to him one day and is like, hey, I gotta go off to college. Um, I'm not gonna see you for a while. And he's like, well, how long? 90 days. And he's like, that's gonna be 90 years to me. Are you kidding me? And so he ends up like kind of like kidnapping her and taking her to his land instead of her going off to college. He tries to convince her that he loves her and they're meant to be together. There is a curse involved though. Kyrian was cursed when he was very young, as well as the other princess in the land to by, by some evil witches that they are going to be blind until they find their fated mate. However, you can't like see your fated mate if you're blind. And so there's like a bunch of other aspects going on in here too. Um, and if you kiss somebody before you kiss your fated mate, you will be cursed to be blind forever. Like there's a bunch of other things going on in here. And um, I love this one and I can't wait to read the rest of the books in the series because I know all the other books deal with royalty too. Next is The Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. I know I've been talking about this book constantly, but it like falls into a lot of tropes that I just love. So this is about Romeria. She's in our world, our time, and she's a thief. And then she somehow gets like roped into the life 
of this woman who ends up transporting her to a fantasy land. And Romeria gets put into her doppelganger's body. So like she looks like herself, but it's not her. And apparently her doppelganger did some messed up stuff in this fantasy land. And so King Xander here um, is out for retribution on her doppelganger, not knowing that this is a different Romeria. And um, yeah, he's out to get her for what he did to him and his family. And yeah, there's a bunch of other things in here. I don't want to spoil it because um, this book was amazing going in blind because there's so many plot twists and turns that I loved gasping over. So I really recommend this one and royalty does play a heavy part in here. And the last book I want to mention really quick because I talk about it way too much is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This is another fantasy romance. This one is about Maddox and Yaven. Maddox is a warrior who has heard by some rumor that Yaven, the daughter to a very cruel king, is the reason why his parents are dead. So he's out to find Yaven and seek revenge. Yaven ends up finding him instead and is like, hey, I'm not the reason why your parents are dead. It's my father. My father did it. Um, how about we get married though so we can take over his kingdom? He agrees because it's a sound plan, but he doesn't believe that she had nothing to do with his parents' death. He is very standoffish towards her, so it's a very much enemies to lovers hate banging kind of stuff going on here. But I love this one and the royalty part in here is amazing because Yaven, you wouldn't think on the outside that she's this warrior queen because she's very tiny and frail. Her father abused her, so she walks with a limp. She though is one of the strongest heroines I've ever read about in my entire life. And she is just a warrior woman of a queen and I adore her. I recommend this book solely for reading about Yvonne, but the romance in here is amazing as well. So there you have it. Those are some royalty romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a crown emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.